Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, depending on when you're watching this presentation, to the Year 12 and 13 Parent Information Presentation. I'm Miss Lewis, I'm Head of Year 12 and 13 um, and the idea of this presentation is actually just to provide you with more information regarding the sixth form, a little bit of an update on um, what's been happening um, but also for you to ensure that you're feeling up to date with what's happening here in the sixth form. Um, I'm going to take you through what we're going to be presenting and there'll be a number of guest speakers for you as well. I'd like to ensure that by the end of this presentation, you feel in the best possible position to support your child in order to ensure they get the best outcomes once they leave us in year 13. I must admit, I've been really impressed with how our, not only have our year 12 settled into sixth form, but how our year 13s have really started um, September back after such a long break off um, and how they've really applied themselves in this first term. I know that there is a wide range of questions that you as parents might need um, answering and I would like you to know that I'm always at the end of an email or a phone call so if you do feel you need further support um, please make sure you contact me. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind you of the sixth form ethos and three factors that I feel are very important to help pupils to finish year 13, making positive progress, both personally, professionally, and academically. Mr. Byer shared on the induction day, the ethos of keeping up, not catching up. That means keeping on top of work and including being disciplined, meeting deadlines, and completing things such as wider reading and at least two to three hours of independent study per night. Integral to this is also um, some reflection time for pupils in which they factor in lots of things such as reflecting on exam technique, but also a key technique I do um, suggest to students is using something called a personal learning checklist or a PLC. These are available for every subject. Um, and what it does is it enables students to reflect and evaluate based on subject content and knowledge where they feel they're really strong and where they feel they still need to do work. The recommendation is that students always start in those red areas, the areas that they're not the strongest in, in order to make the most progress. We also encourage um, students to use their day very wisely to do work inside a school but also if they're struggling and they need support to talk to their teachers find out what is going well and what they could be improving on this is obviously mainly geared at trying to ensure that they are reflective but also independent learners with, with a really strong work ethic um, but also so that they can reflect on what may need to change Ultimately, we would like students to keep up, not catch up. I also feel we need to aim high and grasp every opportunity. This is my second ethos. Students can be attending things such as webinars or work experience. And if they're accessing regularly, which you can as well, the advice and guidance sent out by Miss Burnett, she shares her weekly careers bulletin um, and these can be found on Parent Mail and Google Classroom for students. Um, and what we suggest is that students aim high here by, and by aiming high, they produce their best work. They should be seeking all valuable work experiences um, and, and or virtual experiences in this time rather than just coasting. These experiences are also shared in um, and opportunities are shared in Assembly Weekly, um, which is also posted on um, Google Classroom for students. And this gives them a range of opportunities to apply for in their own time. Integral to all of uh, the first two um, factors is um, your child's attendance. And there is a clear correlation between attendance and attainment. We ask that if for any reason your son or daughter is going to be absent from school, no matter the reason, um, that we have a parent contact us or carer contact us by calling the sixth form reception. Every moment lost at school is impacting on their futures. 
a key saying I always say to pupils is no regrets. I would like them to ensure that they finish these two years being the best that they can be, seeking all opportunities and finishing these two years knowing that they've got no regrets. Miss Tobias and I have a very clear vision this year in order to improve our sixth form. We have focused on four key areas, not only to improve outcomes for pupils, but also to improve their experiences and their life chances. Two of the areas I'm particularly focusing on are one, praise and rewards, and two, the remote learning that's been introduced this year. An important task for me this half term was to liaise with senior pupil ambassadors and their teams to raise the praise in our sixth form. We want pupils to receive praise and prizes they really want and we want to do this more regularly. We have already set the ball rolling in this aspect and hope to roll out a reward system starting in January. This has been based on student feedback um, and also taking into account what our parameters are. Likewise, I've also been working on remote learning in order to ensure that pupils are gaining the best experience outside of school if they're having to isolate um, and also in, or in order to encourage blended learning when students are off and staff are providing um, live lessons. I've asked students to provide me with regular feedback um, using an online form and this so far has been very helpful in order to, for me to um, in order for me to intervene where necessary. Mr. Byer is going to share with you in a moment some of the student successes that have taken place already in this first term. However, there's a lot been going on in the background for our sixth formers that have really impacted them positively. One of those things is that we've been lucky enough to be able to distribute some Chromebooks and laptops to those students that have been in most need. I know for some students that their situation has changed, which has meant that parents are now working from home and access to online resources and classrooms and Google Classroom whilst at home isolating has been very difficult if parents are using the only device in the house. Likewise, if they're isolating with siblings and there's only one device, it makes working at home very difficult. We've also been successful in delivering free masks to pupils um, across the last couple of days. This has been a success in that students have now got at least a spare mask to use um, if they do not want to use it as a regular mask. We just ask that stu students carry on being really proactive and wearing their mask in communal areas, which I must admit most students are very good at. On a very positive note, our punctuality to school has dramatically improved since the start of the year with a number of students having no lates within the last two weeks and the number of minutes owed because of being late to school or to lessons has dramatically reduced. I'm happy to say that the first bursary payment has already been made in this first term and there's another due after the half term. Students have been really active in spending their money on books and resources and things that they already need.
I'm proud to say that a large number of our students have taken up the opportunity to support Miss Donoghue in feeding families over the Christmas period. This was a scheme that was advertised in tutorial time and in assemblies in order to promote volunteering within the sixth form. Students have now joined and met with Miss Donoghue regarding the Pioneer Scheme, all geared towards fundraising and charity events. And like I said, the volunteering that students have given and the time that they um, are willing to provide to the school and the community is something that they, one, can reflect on positively, but two, can be very proud of, and three, can then record on their CVs, personal statements, and even talk about within interviews. I'd likewise like to say how well our students done in Challenge Week. The first set of data that come back is very positive and is a good indicator for us in areas where students might have gaps in learning and might need further support. I know for some students, particularly in Year 13, this did cause some apprehension and anxiety around um, how staff were going to use the data from Challenge Week. But I have reassured them the idea is that we are able to provide them with better feedback and better guidance on how we can support them moving forward. I would recommend that students continue to look at Google Classroom where staff have been posting regular resources in order to support them. There are lots of exam questions on there posted by staff but also there's opportunities to recap lessons that are being um, shown through Google Classroom in particular areas. On another note, I'd like to say that I'm very proud that our students are keeping safe, washing their hands regularly, wearing masks and keeping a distance. This has meant that currently we have no cases of coronavirus in our sixth form. On that note, regarding health, I'd like to thank those parents that have already completed the health information um, sheet that was sent home regarding your son or daughter that has a medical condition. And if you haven't received that message or haven't um, informed the school that your child has a medical condition, please do so immediately so we can make sure our records are up to date. With particular interest at the moment regarding students that have asthma or anyone that may be particularly affected by the potential coronavirus. Hi, just a quick update from me, Mr. Byer, the Director of Sixth Form at Heathcote. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed uh, the video which showcases some of what the Sixth Form has to offer, um, which we produced to uh, show our Year 11s to encourage them to apply to the Sixth Form, but I also think captures a lot of the great stuff that's happening for Year 12 and 13 as well. So unsurprisingly, one of the key things that is on everybody's mind is, is what will happen with exams for next summer. Um, and we're now seeming more than ever that they are likely to go ahead, but with some adjustments. Uh, the government is still due to give a bit more detail uh, about how this will operate in the new year. But the latest from the Department for Education indicates that there will be slightly more generous grade boundaries uh, using last year's calculated grades as a benchmark rather than previous year's uh, actual exams so students this year should not be disadvantaged. They've also indicated that they will give some notice of the topics that might come up in the exams to help focus revision. So as soon as we know more about that, we will obviously be sharing it with heads of department and uh, pupils so they can really hone in on the areas they need to be focusing in on lessons. Um, again, more detail to follow, but they're indicating that in certain subject areas uh, where possible, they'll be uh, allowing formula sheets and additional information to come into the exam uh, to reduce the amount of memorization required for those examinations and if there is uh, a case where somebody misses the exams due to self-isolation or illness they're providing a backup set of exams at a later dates to enable students to still sit those really important exams 
So uh, it's a bit more detail been released and, and more to follow and there'll be uh, an update in a letter from the Narrowing the Gap team, myself and Miss Argarakis. So do keep a look out on Parent Mail uh, and we'll give those updates as soon as we've got much more precise detail about individual subjects impacted in the new year. So even though there seems to be a po more positive picture emerging in terms of exam support, I also wanted to remind you that we are offering uh, a range of other ways in which we're supporting Year 12 and 13. So for Year 13, we've uh, launched our after school intervention programme and that's running in option blocks so that uh, there are no clashes and students can attend as many sessions as they're invited to. Um, we've also looking at refining the opportunity for Year 13 pupils who missed out on such a lot of important learning in, in lockdown down to be able to attend those taught lessons face to face uh, where, f where they're happening in year 12 so that if they need to recap and go over material they were accessing from home last year they'll get a chance to be in the lessons again this year as they're being taught. We're also aware that this is a stressful and uncertain time. We're living through uh, the, the pandemic, but also academically and the, the world of work is very uncertain. So just a reminder that we've got lots of opportunities for the counselling service. Um, myself and Miss Lewis are always available to, to listen and offer guidance and support if there are problems in terms of anxiety and mental health. And that's really important that as we move uh, into the 2021, that our pupils are working in a sustainable way. This is a two year journey for year 12, but also we've got several months still to go. So while of course we want our pupils to be working hard and achieving the best, we're also really keen that that, that is managed and offset with the mental wellbeing that it's gonna to take to be in a good mental space with all the preparation done uh, in the summer for the exams in a manageable and calm way. I also wanted to share with you some positive news from our university applications, uh, apprenticeship opportunities and other success stories in the sixth form. So we're delighted that we've currently got at the moment um, and hopefully more to come to seven Oxford and Cambridge interviews uh, and we wish those uh, pupils the best of luck as they're preparing for those in the coming weeks. Uh, but also we've got lots of uh, pupils who are applying for and taking part in the Social Mobility Foundation scheme uh, and one member of Year 12 who's applying for the Sutton Trust scheme to study at an American university. So lots of exciting opportunities uh, coming up. Um, just a reminder, we've got a partnership with Uptree and Miss Burnett's presentation on careers will also signpost a lot of other excellent places to look for careers opportunities too. Uh, but we've had news that several of our pupils this term have been accepted to work experience placements and we've been uh, awarded uh, some opportunities for students to take part in uh, apprenticeship application masterclasses at some top companies and we hope that that will enable them to be successful in the new year as they go on to apply into the world of work. And the final image there is representing the work that is already underway for this year's bar mock trial competition. So last year's uh, team did brilliantly. They competed at Snaresbrook Crown Court, got to the finals. and We're hoping for some more success in this year's competition. And we've had some support from some of our alumni. Um, Mary Ann, one of our previous students, has come back and uh, worked on Zoom with some of our students this year to help prepare them. So we're really uh, excited that what, as much as we possibly can, there are opportunities uh, virtually and digitally uh, to enable uh, year 12 and 13 to access a broad curriculum. I um, would encourage you to look out at university open days, lectures, taster opportunities that are coming up all the time. And just a reminder of Miss Burnett's weekly bulletin where there are lots of opportunities available as well. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind you of some of the key staff that are involved with supporting your son or daughter during their time at sixth form. Firstly, we have Miss Hillman, our head teacher, Mr. Abbott and Mr. Gallacher, who both lead in quality of education, Miss Close, who leads on behaviour and behaviour for learning, Miss Elmy, who's in charge of parent engagement and pupil our pupil ambassadors. Mr Hutchins, our safeguarding lead, and Miss Argarakis, who's in charge of data reports and ensuring that pupils make positive progress. Alongside those senior leaders, we also have our SEN team, who have worked, we've worked very closely this year already in order to ensure that exam access arrangements 
are up to date and are, are ready for key events such as challenge weeks and any formal exams that may be taking place um, such as maths and English resets, BTEC unit exams or any retake exams. So I'd like to introduce Miss Gardner and Miss Smith who both lead in um, SEND. Alongside those members of staff, I'd like to introduce our admin team that you would speak to regularly and those staff that are supporting your son or daughter within the school day. So I'd like to introduce Miss Greaves and Miss Cortelli, both who work on um, sixth form reception. And I'd like to introduce Miss Wright and Miss Baker, who help in the LRC and are involved within our admin team, ensuring that students are fully supported in every way. As you are aware, we've had to introduce a recovery timetable in order to ensure we meet COVID guidelines and are keeping the school safe. Therefore, currently, we are working on a timetable of a four period day in which students do not have a tutorial session in the morning as per planned. They are, however, still receiving a weekly tutorial slot in which an assembly is still delivered via myself or the tutorial teachers. So although our staff haven't been able to see their tutees regularly, they are still visible in the sixth form and they are still available for tutees to go and see them if they have any concerns or issues. So I'd like to introduce you to both the year 12 and 13 tutors. They are each going to introduce themselves as well and just remind you of some of the expectations that we have of your son or daughter. Hello and welcome to Heathcote Science College. My name is Mr Edwards and I am the form tutor for year group 13-3. Uh, I also teach the construction course called the Level 2 Diploma in Maintenance Operations. During this video you will learn about pastoral care here at Heathcote and you will also meet the rest of the tutor team who will explain the expectations of a Heathcote learner. My name is Mrs Armit and I'm 13-4 form tutor and art and design teacher. There is a lot of support available for you to maintain good mental health and wellbeing at Heathcote School. So many of the staff have been trained to offer you support and being at sixth form can be a very stressful time um, studying for your exams and thinking about going to university or applying for apprenticeships and planning your future career paths um, can all give you a lot of extra stress to cope with. So many of the staff at Heathcote have been trained to support you with your mental health. Um, if you need support you could speak to Miss Tobias, Head of Sixth Form, Miss Lewis, Head of Year 12 and Year 13, your form tutors or your subject tutors. And if you need any further support, you could ask your form tutor to make a referral for you to the school counsellors, Miss Stewart and Miss Peters. At Heathcote, we encourage you to maintain positive well-being. Um, this will be through your intellectual development, your spiritual development, uh, building social relationships, feeling part of your community and maintaining good physical health. There are a lot of available websites um, that will help support you with your mental health. So for example, NHS Every Mind Matters um, will give you a personalised plan to help you feel more in control and to deal with stress and anxiety. On a daily basis, there's a lot of things you can do to maintain positive well-being. 
You can take breaks from technology, spend time outside in nature, spend time with people who support you, and eat fresh fruit and vegetables daily. You can also do breathing exercises, um, get involved in a creative activity, limit the time you spend on phones, and talk to people about your problems. So all of the staff that I mentioned on the first slide will be available for you to support you when you need it. Hi there, my name is Ms Ravi and I'm a business studies teacher here at Heathcote School. I also currently coordinate some of the year 12 tutorials that surrounds a project called VESPA. Um, this is basically a project or a workshop that enlightens students to sort of think about some of the vision for the near future, some of the efforts, the systems of practice and the attitudes that they embed within their learning. Um, these activities sort of the reason why we've brought it out is to really and truly get our students to think about some of the different ways that they might reach out to their learning. Um, it might be that they, you know, there's potential out there, but they don't know sort of how to get onto that stepping stone. Um, and of course, this leads on to us trying to bring out some of the CV skills and embedding some of the outside world skills that can try and help them uh, in the near future, whether it's for their career or in the deeper understanding of the world of learning. Um, it is something that we are looking to obviously take on for next year and it is something of success at the moment um, and hopefully we can have you on board with us also. Thank you. Hello, my name is Mr Henry. I am the tutor for 13.2. My specialism subject is computer science, and I am also the head of enterprise department. My chosen subject for this evening is Google Classroom, which we have recently introduced to the school. This is a virtual learning environment which allows pupils to upload and receive classwork that they may miss due to absence from school. It is an important tool during this year of COVID where we are able to engage pupils on any device that can connect to the internet so they can receive their proper learning throughout the year. Recently, we've introduced live classes in the eventuality that pupils may be at home uh, to study. So we want pupils to ensure that their cameras are on so that the teacher can communicate effectively as a one-to-one -one with the pupil at home. Google Classroom is an essential tool for this year and it will provide all the resources that would happen normally within a classroom at their home. Hi, my name is Sabri. I'm the lead teacher of economics here at Heathcote. Uh, I'm also the form tutor for Form Group 12.1. Uh, I'd like to talk to you today about the importance of both attendance and punctuality. Um, it's no coincidence that both are strongly positively correlated with outcomes and obviously is massively important. Uh, Perhaps you can see the kind of policy procedures we have in place. So we've got an attendance flowchart as well as a punctuality flowchart which breaks down what the school will be doing at each stage if pupils are attending or are not being punctual. Um, Borough-wide, as well as in the school, we aim for 95% attendance as a minimum. Um, so obviously it's massively important. Um, as well as attendance, we need pupils being here on time, ready to learn, uh, and not walking into lessons late, disturbing lessons, disturbing progress, um, as it does cause problems. Behaviour for Learning, Heathcote Sixth Form.
Mr. Dolan, DT Hod, Form 12.5, Behaviour for Learning. Students' behaviour and attitudes to learning are the most significant factors in bringing about all forms of success at Heathcote School. No student can become the best they can be unless they develop positive behaviours in respect of their relationships with others, their conduct around school and their attitude to their own learning and future. Students are required to undertake a range of tasks and activities that demand high levels of independent learning. Students need to be able to prioritise tasks and make effective use of their study periods. These are not to be used as free time or to have a break. Where students encounter difficulties, experienced staff will provide support and guidance. Examples of positive behaviour for learning. Settling down quickly to tasks. Getting work out ready and being organised. Actively listening. Raising hand to answer questions, concentrating on work, and being polite to staff and other pupils. Maximising potential in the sixth form. Through a combination of research evidence and experience, we have compiled the typical characteristics of students who enjoy the high success in the sixth form in terms of grade outcomes and progression. This is not meant to be prescriptive, and each student is an individual, but can be used as a guide to monitor student effectiveness. Typical characteristics of the successful sixth form students. Students must be punctual to school and lessons. They complete at least four hours of independent study for each subject studied per week. They submit independent study tasks in full and on time. They work more than 10 hours in paid slash voluntary employment. They have goals and they know what they want to do and they are proactive in ensuring that they are doing what is needed to achieve their goal. They invest time in setting goals and researching strategies. They are effective at time management. They use planners, to-do lists and timetables in order to prioritise work, meet deadlines and stay on top of workload. They are organised and always attend lessons fully prepared, paper, pens, equipment, etc. They engage with teachers and tutors. They ask questions and are clear about how to raise their achievement. They engage with parents about their learning, what they're studying, how they're doing, what they're planning to do to improve. They use peers to improve their own learning and study habits through discussion and collaborative working. They use effective revision strategies, such as visual methods, practice papers, collaborative working, and employ them throughout the year, not just to examinations. They enjoy a healthy work-life balance and devote time to other pursuits, hobbies, social activities. Hi everyone, my name is Ms. Mertrich. I teach Business and Economics here at Eastco School and I'm the tutor of 12.3. I'm going to talk to you today about lunch and break expectations. These are very important to be met for everyone's safety. Students have 20 minutes break time from 10 
20 to 10.40 and 30 minutes lunchtime from 12 to 12.30. At this time, the canteen is open for eating. Year 13 have allocated rooms for independent study period and eating. Students can spend their break time and lunch time in the classrooms. However, these need to be kept tidy and clean. Students are expected to avoid unnecessary contact and keep two meters apart where possible. They're also expected to wear masks or visors in communal areas. This includes toilets, corridors, and the LRC. Students are expected to wash and sanitize their hands before and after break time. Students can use the LRC during break and lunch time and in their independent study periods. Make sure you avoid large gatherings and that you keep your study area clean and tidy. The key points to take home are to be safe and sensible during break and lunch time. Please wear masks at all times in communal areas. Keep social distancing wherever possible and make sure that your rooms are clean and tidy. Hi, I'm Miss Harper and I'm a dance and drama teacher here at Heathcote School, as well as a tutor for Year 12. I'm going to talk you through the dress code that we expect our sixth form students to follow. As sixth form students, they are role models for the rest of the school. Therefore, their dress and appearance must be appropriate to support and encourage the ethos of the school. Dress code that we accept our sixth formers to be wearing is that of business attire. This includes formal shirts and blouses with a collar suitable for wearing a tie. The shirt can be a long or short sleeved. Formal tailored trousers or a skirt in the colours black, grey or blue. Low heeled or flat shoes or boots are acceptable but no trainers or stiletto heels. We also accept black socks all tights to be worn. However, no long socks or patterned tights. You may also choose to wear a suit jacket, a v-neck jumper which shows the collar or the blouse, smart cardigans and smart business dresses. All students are expected to be wearing their year group lanyards at all times and this is no exception for the sixth form students. If there's any further information that you require on what uniform is acceptable and that which is not, please do visit our school website. Thank you. Hello, I'm Mr Chevalu and I'm the tutor of 12.2. I teach psychology and I'm interested in talking to you about detention in the sixth form. Now we're very lucky in the sixth form in that we have our students who have chosen to be here and are motivated to be here. So discipline is not the same as in the rest of the school. In the lower school, there are numerous reasons why somebody might have to attend a detention, either because of behavior, because of using a device which is not allowed in the lower school, or for various other reasons. In the sixth form, although very occasionally there is the bit of arrant behaviour that we'd rather not see, detentions are largely to do with time management. By which I mean that if somebody is late for school, they get a detention. If somebody is late for class, they get a detention. If they're late handing in work, they get a detention. But we don't have fights, we don't have silly behaviour, we don't have people doing things in lessons that they're really not supposed to do because they're here focused on their learning. So we do have lateness detentions every Wednesday after school. The students are informed whether they're in lateness detention on the morning of the detention via their form tutors. Although, of course, in recent times we haven't had form time so they're informed more directly by the head of sixth form. The detentions play, take place in room 6129, which is a computer room, and the students have to spend as long in detention as they have missed for lesson lateness or school arrival lateness, plus 15 minutes. 
So one minute's detention, one minute's lateness, leads to 16 minutes of detention and so on. Detentions build up over the week, sometimes over the weeks, and it does occasionally happen that students have dozens or hundreds of minutes of detention over the course of a term. But obviously this is not something we try and encourage, and by and large if people hand in their work on time, get to class on time, and get to school on time, they don't have detentions. So the advice is always set your alarm 15 minutes earlier than usual. When everyone else starts to go towards their lessons after break or lunch, head in that direction as well. And if you have a deadline, make sure you hand the work in on time. And that way you avoid detentions. Hi, my name is Shani Ayu. I'm one of the psychology teachers here at Heathcote and currently one of the form tutors for 12.4. Today I've been asked to talk to you about Heathcote's newsletter, Heath Notes, which we successfully launched approximately two weeks ago. The aim of the newsletter is to try to get parents involved in Heathcote's community and to also try to minimise the amount of letters and messages we send out to you via parent mail. Each week, you'll receive a newsletter from us that is packed with information, starting with a message from the head teacher, some key dates, key upcoming dates, and the all important lunch menu. The content of the newsletter may vary week from week, but we are hoping that every week we can tell you about our departments and what they've been up to and what they are hoping to achieve in the next few months. This could involve our departments telling you about any clubs that they are running at the moment or what they have been learning in lessons. We are also hoping to include our successes in our newsletter, not just any success that the whole school has achieved, but more importantly, some of our individual successes. In other words, some of our star Heathcock pupils, the ones who have achieved something tremendous inside the school and outside the school. The newsletter is really also an important platform where we can tell you about any support groups that we might have that your children may want to join or any clubs that they would like to join. Like I've mentioned, the Heathcote newsletter will vary week from week. So you might find the content changes, but the key message will still be there. We're trying to get parents involved so they know what their child is doing, they know what the school is doing, and they feel part of what is happening in this school. We will be ending every newsletter with a weekly bulletin. This part of the newsletter is very important for some of the students in the older years because it will talk about opportunities that your child should try to go for that will help them with their careers and with their further studies. We really do hope that you find our newsletter informative, that you enjoy reading it, and it really makes you feel part of the Heathcote journey. Thank you so much for listening. Welcome to Heathcote's special bulletin on enrichment and extracurricular opportunities. I'm Mr. Aguiletos, Head of Social Sciences and uh, Tutor for 12D and 13D. I will be discussing with you and supporting information about enrichment and extracurricular opportunities for Heathcote Sixth Form. We have a huge variety of academic and pastoral opportunities. For example, the EPQ, the Extended Project Qualification, where your son or daughter would be able to study towards an extra additional qualification worth up to 24 UCAS points that all universities and employers value highly because it offers students independent critical thinking skills. Another enrichment opportunity students can uh, get involved in is our debate club and bar mock trial competition. The students themselves uh, run the debate in society and they have been working really hard um, promoting topics such as Black Lives Matter movement, feminism and many more. One more exciting opportunity is the London School of Economics um, master classes where students can apply for a summer school and 16 Saturday sessions 
for sociology, politics, history, maths or economics at the LSE and that is very important for them as it supports their academic and university progression. Heathcote Sixth Form has managed to secure really good partnerships with LSE, UCL, Leeds, Leicester and other universities and we have even managed to secure financial scholarships. All of these plus many more opportunities do make Heathcote the right choice for you. Looking forward to meeting you in September 2021. Thank you. Hi, my name is Miss Elmi and I'm the Assistant Head here at Heathcote, leading on people leadership and careers. I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about pupil leadership, what we've achieved so far and where we hope to go. Pupil leadership at Heathcote is an integral part of our ethos and is a driving force in our school improvement plan. And over the last few months, we have looked at revising our pupil leadership program to ensure that all pupils are able to work collaboratively, motivate each other and build the necessary skills needed in later life. To achieve this, we had to ask ourselves one essential question, and that was, what do we want to see in all our pupils? And the answer to this is that we want to see all our pupils be able to self-regulate their emotions, be able to monitor and control their behaviours and their interactions with others and the environment. And in order to do this, they need to be, the, to be able to embody model leadership. They need opportunities to review and reflect and they need to be motivated, motivated to succeed and achieve their goals. So our vision is to empower pupils to self-regulate their emotions and behaviours through model leadership, encouragement and feedback, challenging pupil leaders to be advocates for all building unity amongst their peers and actively taking part and transforming our community. To realise this vision, pupil ambassadors will aim to foster greater collaboration and unity between all pupils throughout the school, enable creativity to flourish as the school community benefits from the wealth of experience, ideas, skills and a sense of fun that pupils bring. Provide opportunities for pupils to develop leadership skills through a variety of inspiring and challenging and valued projects which have impact both positively on learning, teaching and outcomes and ultimately improve the well-being for both pupils, staff and the school. It will also prepare pupils for further and higher education, granting them opportunities to develop core skills that will serve them well in later life. In order to expand the experience of all our pupil ambassadors, each ambassador will work on three projects over the year, and they'll work on this collaboratively. This will include leading on charity and community work, leading on year group competitions, and leading on key priorities assigned by their head of year. They will also be the champions to raise praise across the school. This will include giving regular recognition to pupils across the year groups, providing feedback to peers, staff, and school leaders. So our structure of the Pupil Ambassador Programme will consist of six ambassadors across each year group. However, in year 11 and year 13, this will also include our senior head pupils and our deputy head pupils.
Over the last few months, we've had an overwhelming number of applicants applying for the FIFA ambassador roles. Some applying last year and many applying this year. The interview process was extremely rigorous. It included a range of group tasks and one-to-one -one interviews. And I have to say, every single U group showed great determination and professionalism throughout the process. However, not all pupils were selected to become pupil ambassadors, but we do want to encourage many to take part in all the opportunities that will be taking place in the new year. And finally, in the sixth form, I'd like to congratulate Zara, Sumeha, Jamil, Macy, Regan, Melissa, Selin and Sophie. They, they will be our next pupil ambassadors, leading the sixth form and working with the younger years in order to achieve some of the key priorities of the school. And so I'd just like to thank you all for your continued support and patience over the last few months as we developed our pupil leadership programme. I look forward to working with each of our pupil ambassadors in the new year and I'm excited to share their successes with you in the near future. Until then, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to get in touch and, it, and I look forward to seeing you all one day in person. Hi, I'm Miss Bennett and I work in the careers team at Heathcote. This presentation is just to give you a little bit of information about the careers programme at Heathcote. Um, and it's a programme of events tailored to each stage of our pupils' learning journey. So that's from year seven when they join us and they start to think about careers and skills needed in the world of work and just just getting to know those ideas all the way through to years 12 and 13 when they may be making choices about employment, apprenticeships or going off to university. So in addition to careers education in the classroom, we also offer a number of other opportunities to our pupils. This includes one-to-one -to -one, um, information advice and guidance sessions, access to work experience placements, information about apprenticeships, um, industry insight day, so the opportunity to meet with employers um, and find out about specific industries and job roles, um, further and higher education taster days, um, open days at universities. We also link up with employers and unis to offer mentoring schemes and we can help with applications, so be that for university or for sixth form or even job applications, we can help um, pupils to um, develop their employability skills and um, practice interview techniques. So this diagram kind of shows you a bit more clearly the different stages of education and the different levels of qualification. So you can see within secondary education you've got your GCSEs up in the sort of top left hand side and then below that you've got further education so that's college, sixth form um, and intermediate and advanced apprenticeships up to level three. Um, moving over onto the right hand side level four through to level eight this is your higher education so um, um, university routes and higher rate higher level and degree level apprenticeships as an alternative to um, full-time university so we work again with our six Form students to consider their choices um, for when they finish um, with us at 18. Um, so they've got the option to go on to university, um, they may choose to do an apprenticeship 
apprenticeship again there's level four and five and six apprenticeships like so degree apprenticeships so they may go out into the workplace um, but still study um, a at degree level um, but the difference between doing that at university and doing that via an apprenticeship is that the employer covers the cost of the qualification so um, you're earning a salary and you're having your your course fees paid and you end up with a qualification at the end of it um, other options are to go straight out into the world of work um, to do some further education or some access to university type courses um, or students may even just decide they're not ready to, to um, go off to university so they may take a gap year. Um, so it's about helping them to look at all the options and choose the right route for them. So here I've just given you some tips. Um, these are the kind of conversations that we'll have in the one-to-one -one sessions with pupils. Um, if they know what they want to do, then it's really good just to kind of, you know, draw out of them some more information about that. What do they know about sort of the pathway that they they would like to take? Have they looked at the skill sets required and what qualifications they need? Are they clear on, you know, what the role entails, what they'll be earning, what sort of hours? they'll need to do and the working conditions um, and also kind of how realistic is it um, in terms of the job opportunities are are there lots of jobs out there in their chosen field or is it a dying kind of industry you know things are moving towards more automation um, so is it is it a job that's going to be affected by the future world of work um, if they don't know what they want to do then that's fine um, it's all right not to know at this age exactly what they want to do that's perfectly fine um, but what we would do is encourage self-awareness here so we would get them to think about their own strengths and their interests and their qualities what are they good at and um, what do they feel passionate about what would be important to them in a potential career do they want to travel etc um, how does it link to their subjects what subjects do they enjoy and why are their job roles linked to that that they can take that further um, and then hobbies and interest what what do they do outside what do they love what gets them up and gets them uh, motivated can they link that to the potential sort of pathways of, of work and career ideas So I hope this presentation has been helpful and it's given you a bit of an overview into the work we do in school. Um, this last page, you've got my contact email address on here. Um, feel free to contact me with any questions relating to careers or progression or work experience, etc. Um, you can check the careers bulletins that are sent out on Google Classroom and Parent Mail. The sign up codes are on this screen for pupils to sign up to the Google Classrooms if they haven't done that already please get them to do so and then at the bottom there's just you know these are the most used go to websites that I use in sessions with students I thought I'd share them with you um, they're quite user friendly and there's loads of information on there thanks for listening Thank you very much for your time and support. If you have any questions or queries, please feel free to call the school line and choose option three, or feel free to use my email address and I will try to respond um, as soon as possible. I hope you have a good um, festive break when it comes and I look forward to um, having the students back in January for a, another start to a good year.